right. This is no longer a test. No, it's not. Welcome to the Bateman podcast or the Batemans. With an S. Yeah, there's two yeah, of us. There Does is. that make sense? Well, actually, there's four of us. If you're being really technical, there's six of us. Yeah. You can't forget the fur babies. The fur they baby. were they were here first. Joey was the OG. The children. Yeah. So for uh, those of you who have absolutely no clue who we are, I'm Nick. And I'm Maria. And uh, we are the Batemans. Yeah. We have been together for almost 15 years. Yeah. Are you going to plan something really amazing? For 15 years? Yeah. Absolutely not. It's got to be a surprise. My part is just to show up, but you have to do all the planning. Oh, it's about the Because I had to carry the babies. It's about the little things, right? All right, but I expect something big for the 15th. I'm just going to take you to a hot dog stand. (laughs) You know how it is. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, yeah. We're excited to uh, start this podcast and share a side to us that you guys might not know. Yeah, an unfiltered side of us that we don't really share on other platforms and this is just where we can be free and speak openly about anything right yeah and uh things that we wanted to share that might help anyone watching um some of the first topics we'll be going over in the podcast uh are quite serious to us Mm -hmm. and our family and uh ours is a very sensitive topic yeah and we thought it would be the (laughs) best topic to start our podcast with um, because we feel it would help the most people possible. So uh, with that note, our first topic on the podcast is talking about autism mm-hmm. and how we have learned and dealt and overcome and all those things to do with autism. And uh, our son, Chase, who's now four years old, we found out when he was how old? 18 months. Was it 18 months? Yeah. Yeah, we took him to a pediatrician, and at 18 months we were still kind of battling it thinking like he's fine it's too early to diagnose which yeah part of me still thinks it it was kind of is too early to diagnose yeah. a kid at that age but his pediatrician looked at <clears> us <throat> and goes oh your kid has autism with no remorse which me and you oh. yeah she had no bedside manner the way she delivered that and I feel like for first time parents it's already overwhelming because you're learning to be a parent and you're looking for things like best things for them to eat and you know all you're following all their milestones and then to go to an appointment and then the pediatrician say oh your son is definitely on the spectrum it really rocked our world huh Yeah no well she didn't do it nicely which no. is uh me and you wanted to rip her head off to be yeah. honest we were like what a dumb beat itch um don't get interference did you hear that oh maybe our phones Are your phone ringing no but let's okay let's keep going um it probably was one of our phones um more worry but yeah no we were just floored because this woman with no remorse was like yeah yeah no said it like it was nothing too yeah like it's a pretty life-changing thing um and it was very hard for us we cried for a month Mm -hmm. yeah the first week and and mind you like rewind like it was when the beginning of the pandemic happened and we were very isolated at home and we were alone and we started sharing pictures and videos of Chase on social media, and that's when people were like, oh, maybe your son's on the spectrum. You should get him tested. Mm-hmm. And the f- and the first time that people started messaging us, we were very angry about it. And yeah, we were in denial. Confused as well, because we were like, what is autism? And we started researching. We're like, no, he's not autistic. We were also confused because yeah. some days he acted normal. Mm-hmm. Like he would do everything a normal whatever normal Toddler, is, his what, age. whatever normal is yeah. would do and then some days he would not be in his own world yeah, be his own world do unusual things no that eye contact etc yeah um but uh, yeah it's definitely one of the hardest things we've ever had to do is go down this journey we'll just go down this journey and accept it yeah like we we were in denial for so long we'd be like he's not he is he's not he is yeah. for the longest time. for the longest time yeah and uh that's why we wanted to come on a platform and share our experience with other families that are going through 
this type of thing because we know it was hard for us. Yeah. And we really struggled. Yeah, we felt alone. We felt, uh, yeah. but, you know, with the stats that, you know, we've pulled up to share with people showing how common autism is now. Yeah, and, and that stat is growing every year, which is... It's scary. Scary, yeah. yeah. And there's there could be a lot of people out there watching this and being like, wow, maybe my kid is on the spectrum and in denial like we were for the longest time. And maybe this is your sign to like go get your child tested because the best thing you can do as a parent um, with a child that's on the spectrum is early intervention. And I think like that's really why we wanted to jump on here because like when we learned Chase was on the spectrum, we dove on YouTube and we found really scary things and it did put us in a a, a hole of depression for yeah, the I, longest time. It's a, it, that's a hard one to tell people because yeah. like uh, I don't suggest doing it because that gets you in a dark spot because you see like the worst end of it. Yeah. Which is the saddest thing yeah. I think I've ever seen. Yeah, avoid YouTube altogether. <laughs> well, just, yeah. In the beginning. Not avoid it. Like, <laughs> see, like as a parent, you want to know everything. But you want to know, uh, yeah, both it, sides of the spectrum. But it's, and, it's heartbreaking yeah. seeing how the darkest side of the spectrum, how bad it can get. Um, not the darkest side of the spectrum, but well, yeah, but it makes it make it makes me sad. The difficult side, yeah, the, the difficult yeah. side. I just call it dark because obviously it makes me sad seeing some kids that aren't able to show affection or do that type yeah. of stuff. And I very thankful that Chase can. But when I see a parent that's going through that, to me it's dark. I know it's a it's sad. It's a sad. It's just yeah. sad. And I yeah. just that's what broke my heart going into the deep end of YouTube and seeing um, how far it can go and just but yeah no it's it leaves you speechless it does yeah and uh but but yeah going back to what you said about early intervention the way that kind of changed my mind when with chase was even though we were in denial with it part of me was thinking even if he doesn't have it it's way better to be proactive well, to be it's better to do all the stuff assuming they do have it mm -hmm. and then it turns out oh well he's just a late bloomer right then yeah. to not so that that would be my message to parents is yeah even if you think it for a second put them in the extra classes like what's it hurt to give them extra speech or yeah therapies uh, therapies like yeah. it will just if anything help them just navigate as a human and but if they end up not being on the spectrum at all and they misdiagnosed you just got a whole bunch of great extra therapy extra therapy that yeah. puts them in like a head start position so yeah. that's kind of what for me made me be like you know what time to accept this yeah i actually remember you saying that and and having that you know perspective and acting on that mm -hmm. i remember for gosh, I feel like it was like a year we were in denial about it and we were struggling with, you know, accepting that. And when we would meet with like a psychologist for, you know, his examination on how far he's on the spectrum, um, remember that appointment? And we were, again, in <sighs> denial about it. And <laughs> well, it I really don't like how some of these people handle the situation. Yes. Like the person that diagnosed chase how far yeah we first we so always talk let's about clarify this. the first time we met with a regular pediatrician who was like oh i've spent a lot of time with children with autism i i've got a lot of patients he's on the spectrum then the second appointment we went to was with a psychologist Which is a, yeah psychologist so first pediatrician second psychologist yeah. who only deals with autism the pediatrician did deal with autism yeah. according to her but yeah, yeah the the psychologist looked at him for 30 minutes, maybe less, 20 maybe, and he was just, has off days, has good days. He was having an off day. He had to, an off day that day. Yeah, day, wanted yeah. to play with the train, and then she just, off of he 30 minutes. He was laser focused on a... Yeah, but yeah. we felt that it was a misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. And then just to throw him on there, we were just like, feeling it was very misdiagnosed, and it was two people's vision of him from seeing him for five minutes, one person, the pediatrician, yeah, and then her, the psychologist, for twenty minutes, yeah, and then he was put into this bracket of what did they label him? Uh, medium, 
What, what are the, the number? It was level, level two. two. There's three oh. levels. One yeah. is the most mildest. Second is moderate and. So in other terms, three level me, three medium. is severe. So medium, but yeah. So she classified Chase as level, level two. two on the spectrum. Yeah. And we walked away from that appointment um, dis- in disagreement of that because, it, like you said, it was an off day for Chase. Remember, he didn't nap that day before we went to the appointment. He probably didn't eat that day and he was very moody. Yeah. And then when we got to the appointment, the whole thing was like, here's, you know, a task, stack the blocks. Then the next, uh, and you play with the blocks for two minutes and then taking the blocks away, here's a tr- toy train. How do you play with the train? Okay, I'm two minutes done take the train away and obviously like any other child at 18 months old oh new blocks i want to play with this he didn't want to move from that and he got upset which is completely normal for a toddler and she focused on that and was like oh he's not very good at transitioning that is you know and that was part of her reason to classify him as on level two because he had a really hard time transitioning Mm -hmm. um and oversensitive and i guess just the best thing that for me would be that these people just need a little more bedside manner yeah this is earth shattering yeah to parents your child is like your everything your world like that's the only thing in this whole universe that we like love so much and we do anything for and then someone's coming in like yeah yeah they're moderately autistic bye (laughs) yeah but but just seeing them for 20 minutes it's yeah could you really get to know someone yeah anyone for 20 minutes yeah and then again this was during the pandemic so we never left our house it was like think about just normal people how many people as adults can put on a front for 20 minutes and leave and you have no clue that deep down they're a really troubled person yeah yeah um so it obviously kids wear their heart on their sleeve and they're true to who they are but it's just the the devil's advocate of it where in that moment he was having a bad moment but she didn't get to see his good moments because yeah. what happened if we walked in there and he was acting great and having a good day yeah and then Maybe we, we was... left and she's like oh he's fine yeah and it's so that 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 frustrated me a bit where a lot of people who didn't get to know him put him on that label and then the people that did repetitively get to know him and work with him like his therapist yeah they're like he's gonna be fine yeah he had an early childhood educator michelle and she was awesome michelle. And she was always like, he's going to be totally fine. Don't even worry about it. I work with, like she worked with 20, over 20 years experience. And she was like, he's going to be one of the great kids. He's going to do amazing. And I was like, you can tell that? Like he's only 20 months old. She's like, don't even worry. And she gave us a lot of confidence in navigating through this journey. And I'm like, I thank her so much because she put me at ease ease, a lot of the times because I'd always stress like oh my god he's you know 22 months and he's still not really speaking and like at that point your kid should be you know babbling and like have you know a mountain of words and he maybe had four you know and nothing really consistent so we were like is he nonverbal like and another thing with autism you can have regression with your vocabulary and he went through that yeah we'd have times where he would oh he's saying a new word yeah. And then he we, would backtrack. Yeah. And then we'd have times where he would make a lot of eye contact and we're like, yeah. oh my God, he's doing so well. And and yeah, the thing that like when I look back, I'm like, wow, he was autistic. It was when like he'd ever make eye contact with like, oh, did you see that? He looked right in my eyes. And like, that's really not no, that's a 100%. normal thing. Um, now that we can compare with Theo. Yeah, now like, that we compare with Theo because we, Theo is very lucky that he's very he's actually advanced for a 14 month old yeah and now we can see like whoa the difference the difference yeah um but it's it, it doesn't even matter because one thing that we both realize that obviously we love chase so much he's incredible and beyond belief yeah um we always look at it well, we try our best and most of the time we do we look at it as the cup is half full not half empty mm-hmm. and we're thankful because chase we feel he is on the spectrum. Yeah. And, but he can do things that other kids that are higher on the spectrum cannot do. Yeah. Like show affection. He's so affectionate. Oh God, he's such a suck. And we're he's so just lucky. like you. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we just love that he's so affectionate. He yeah. doesn't have any like, 
sensory issues that are noticeable to the point where like yeah. if music goes on he doesn't have to plug his ears or he if he go like for a second when we take him into arcades he would get a little overwhelmed but now that's gone yeah. so like yeah. ev everything that would be like a physical disadvantage associated with autism he doesn't really have which yeah. we're so thankful for like he doesn't have any seizures he doesn't have any yeah. problems sleeping yeah. i'd say the only physical thing but i guess it's partially mental that obviously still has a hard time with is eating yes yeah um and i we always go back and forth if it's a texture thing or not because mm -hmm. he'll eat all textures it depends what he's in the mood for like he'll eat yeah. crunchy he'll eat smooth he'll eat cold popsicles he'll eat warm things warm things like yeah. so it's always an ongoing battle with that kid with food yeah sometimes you think you cracked the code and you're like oh great he loves chicken and you do chicken like on a schedule every week on a monday and then one monday's no no thank you and it's like for god's sakes <laughs> yeah but again that's like a normal thing for kids that's a normal thing for kids yeah every so, pediatrician or say every mom just said, yeah every mom that. has said that. <laughs> every that's, dad that's says normal. that yeah but yeah i feel like the most important note that we could get across would be if you do feel like your kid could be on the spectrum it's okay yes um you don't have to accept it right away no you won't take accept your, it take right your away. time um really think about it and take your time to process it like we have taken our time to process this and i think that's important to share like obviously this is the first time we've publicly come out and said this we needed to make sure we were okay to share this and even some of our friends we didn't share for a while yeah like take your time with this so you can navigate through this in a healthy manner i think that is like a big thing you don't need to tell the whole world my kid's just being diagnosed like yeah. let that sit and marinate like however you need to and yeah find your circle your good social circle and support system reach out to good therapists and make a plan and like nick said if your kid doesn't end up being on the spectrum and is just a late bloomer then you did your part and you did the right things and you got them early intervention and you got a good support system for you that you could you know lean on a friend and cry and vent like that's important too um no 100 percent. yeah no it took us this long to yeah chase is going to be five in september yeah, but that, that's we just we needed to process it and digest it ourselves and in our own time yeah, yeah. it's it's not easy but that it's one of the main reasons we want, wanted to come on a platform and, and, share this. and share this because we felt alone. We felt scared. We were in denial. And I, I don't, I just don't want, I don't like the thought of other parents going through this. No, it's so and, painful. And feeling alone. Yeah. So if someone watching this can be like, whoa, I'm going through all this right now. I'm yeah. feeling what they're feeling we help someone yeah even um, if it's just one family or one person like autism still is fairly new so even there may be adults out there young adults who are like why am i so different like maybe you're on the spectrum and maybe you should go get <laughs> tested like that is a, a thing too well speaking of that we <laughs> uh we seem to think that i'm autistic no i think you're definitely autistic <laughs> well i'm the one who said that that's what i think based on just looking back at my childhood yeah just learning about chase has really opened our eyes and being like hmm maybe nick is on the spectrum yeah because a lot of the times uh autism is hereditary or yep. and sometimes it could be environmental like they still don't really know i think it's a bit of both a bit of both but yeah her hereditary but yeah no just looking back at my childhood and you know, we've talked about this a million times, but yeah, with my, your mom. my mom telling me that they said I was globally delayed. Yeah. Uh, I was behind with like potty training. I was behind. Not with, with talking though, not, not communicating. No, not with communicating, but. Um, but socially awkward. You didn't have any peers at a young age. Well, that's because I was a little conniving. Like I was. <laughs> <laughs> that's where Theo gets the like, conniving. No one, <laughs> no one wanted to be friends with me because I, I'm pretty sure I was a dick and like my mom says like you were the devil like she loved me but like she thought i would <laughs> but i think i purposely tried to mess with people when i was a kid yeah that um, was your entertainment yeah i don't yeah but it everyone is in their own way um 
And that's why it's called the spectrum because uh, you know, a lot of therapists and pediatricians and moms of kids who have autism have said they've never seen two autistic kids the same. Never. Which is yeah. crazy. Which is wild to yeah. think, yeah. Which is I've, which made me feel weird about like the whole diagnosis because it's – I know it could be a bit controversial to say, but it bothers me that you could label a kid who barely has any symptoms in the same diagnosis with a kid who is un like can't function without nonstop supervision. Yeah, and that's why, as a parent, for me, it was so hard hard to hear the diagnosis because it's like there's some kids, unfortunately, which I hate to see, but they'll sit and stare at a wall and flap their hands yeah and it's tremendously heartbreaking to see but when you tell a parent of a kid who is very low on the spectrum that they have autism immediately your first reaction your mind goes to oh my god is this how their life's going to be are they going to be not able to function yeah like are they going to be adults and i'm still going to be looking after them and they're not going to be able to communicate with me which is where our mind went at one point yeah um because uh, I, like, I think you remember it but like there was one week where i don't know why and he's never done it ever since that one day we were both bawling but he like hit himself and we're like yeah it was like right after he got diagnosis diagnosed and it was like yeah. within two weeks of that appointment and i don't remember what was really happening at that time i just remember crying in the grocery store i was you were like go get groceries and i was no, you didn't even tell me that. No, oh, I was bawling in the grocery store. Really? Well, I just, we got his diagnosis and then he started like hitting himself and I've never seen him do that. Yeah. And I was just like, I went to the dark side of YouTube and. Yeah, you're the worst. This kid will stay up till like four in the morning on YouTube. Or invest- Google. Or Google investigating things. Researching anything. Yeah. But no, like I saw a, a child on YouTube and what just shocked me is like, this kid was i think i showed you the video you did you showed uh, me all of them he was just a beautiful human being like he looked like he was a model like a yeah. supermodel yeah and the mom was like oh he can't function he likes to sit in the back of the car so for hours for hours and just yeah. look at the window so i drive to a place in the in the forest and he sits there and he rocks back and forth and i was just like oh my god yeah. And my heart broke watching this for her. And at, and at least she has a relationship with him, and that's beautiful. But, you know, when you have a child, you don't imagine that's how you would live your life with them. Yeah, I know. Or how they would live their life. So when that's he, he got diagnosed for us, and then he started hitting himself that day, which yeah. we'd never seen him do. And then uh, regressing with some words. And then we were just like, oh, my God, like, is this our reality? That, that was, was really hard. Probably one of the hardest days of my life. And then at that time too, like Chase was not a good eater. He was really into, remember those yogurt packets? He didn't really try, he'd only eat like pasta. Or the draft drink, which was. Yeah. And like smoothie. that was it. So we were just like, and we kept trying to like introduce like a variety of foods and he wouldn't take it. And it was just like, oh my God, like, is this, is this what life's going to be like for Chase? And like, you know. It was just so hard. I remember, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we're just like, oh, I don't want to go back there. No, but, but it everything, yeah, turned out in a in a better light. And but that's like our was our warning in the beginning to like be careful where you go and yeah, it, it don't always assume the worst, which we kind of did. Yeah, uh, which, but it's hard not to when you don't have enough knowledge of it. And then you're just like on YouTube and everyone knows that you can go down a a deep rabbit hole anywhere. And we were ignorant, obviously, to what autism was. Yeah. Like I didn't even know anything about autism until people on Instagram started saying like, maybe you should get him tested on the spectrum. And I was like, what's autism? What's the spectrum? Like, Well, speaking of that, let's bring up the laptop and we brought up some stats. stats, Yeah. That we wanted to share that we still think are uh, quite crazy. Yeah, so according to the CDC, around 1% of the world's population has autism spectrum disorder. Over 75... 1%? 1%, yeah. Over 75 million people. In 2022, one in every 100 children are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Okay, that's better than 
my stat I had in my head for some reason I was thinking it was like one in 30 or is that well hold on oh okay about one in 44 children has been identified with autism spectrum disorder ACD did I say that right yeah Yeah, ASD sorry I was reading something else in the United States according to the CDC one in 44 one in 44 so that's pretty high and that was um a stat done in 2022 and then I'm sure that you're headed to this, but have has that number not risen exponentially? Like, is it, this is not going up every like ten years, like doubling? Um, I'm not sure, but okay, we'll look into that. We yeah. need, we need someone on the side now. We'll be like, hey, yeah, just like Joe Rogan, be like, hey, Jamie, can you pull that up for us? Yeah. Um, but it, like, uh, for autism, it's higher in boys too. Yeah, I did know that, which is uh, it's crazy. But yeah, these stats are definitely crazy to hear because one in 44 is, yeah, is high. It's very high. Mm-hmm. And if it continues to grow at a rate like this in 50 years, it could be one in 20 or one in 10. One in 10? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, okay, so here says ASD is 4.2 times as prevalent among boys. 3.7% as among girls 0.9%. ASD is reported to occur in all racials and ethnic groups. And what um what site are you getting this information from just so we can uh, National Institutes of Health. Okay. Just to make sure that we're vetting the information yes. that we're giving our uh, viewers here so they don't think we're just pulling this out of thin air. Yeah. Um but yeah, it go the stats for this goes up every year. Um, maybe I should look for that. It's definitely scary. We've had our hypothesis on what we think can cause it, mm-hmm. which again is very controversial. Yes, and, and what people feel and say, and you know, we respect other people's opinions and their thoughts because you know that's the point of being free to speak your mind. Yeah. You know, we've thought that it's possibly associated with dietary yes you know we um oh wow sorry yeah here's another stat that was done in uh in 2023 the cdc reported that approximately one in 36 children in the u.s is diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder so so hold on that number went up from one in 44 to one in what was that one in 36 in a year yeah yep so it's so that's terrifying but like me and you feel that it could be dietary issues Mm -hmm. you know when the mom's pregnant or that well the child we felt that it could be environmental issues with like air pollution pollution. Um, we even felt that it could have to do with which is again very controversial and a lot of people might be in the comments being like no but vaccines Mm -hmm. yeah Um, that's just our view of it and we looked and this has been a big part of our life so we've tried to look at every angle avidly yes with an educated and sound mind to see what could be the cause of this um like even the, like going back to the diet we were vegan yeah when we conceived we conceived chase we were vegan we were for vegan. about a year and we were yeah we were vegan for a year and, and then, i think like in my first trimester i started craving meat yeah and that's when we went back to eating introducing meat into our diet yeah but yeah. but the point in my mind is, is if I guess we were eating vegan, in our heads we're eating vegan and maybe mm-hmm. weren't getting the nutrients for a blood type or whatever, however you want to look at it. But the egg that you created and then the sperm that I was creating was yeah. based on that diet. And maybe there was a lack of nutrients mm-hmm. from what vegan food we were cho- choosing. Because yeah. like we weren't the most educated vegan eaters. We were like ordering Hollywood vegan food and be like, oh, this is yummy. Yeah. Like if maybe if we were doing a proper homemade yeah. vegan diet with proper nutrient yeah. research yeah, could have been different. Not saying that veganism causes that. No. I'm just saying that we were... We're, um, we just look back and we see like, what were we doing at that time that could possibly cause, cause g- given us this yeah. outcome? And being in LA as well too, we were thinking, hmm, maybe the air... The air quality. is not as, as... Again, as a parent, you go through all this thinking, well, what did I do wrong? Yes. Like, what, or what could yeah. I have done better that could maybe not have led yeah. to an autism or, or like a chemical imbalance or whatever you want to call it yeah. in a child? And 
So those were some of the things we thought that were like, went through our we're head. like, oh, was it, did we mess up on our diet? Yeah. Did we mess up on the location because there's a lot of pol- air pollution in Los Angeles? Um, which, and then we got cha- uh, Chase's basic vaccines that you're supposed to get when a child's born like with the hepatitis and all that stuff yeah. and, and every time we got him vaccinated he would be re- he would regress regress and that's something we definitely noticed and agreed on yeah. and it scared us and i remember being like should we go for the next one and that was one of our major issues of it, it was like we'd see him regress every single time he had yeah. one and uh so these are just things as parents we noticed and even now like we look back at videos of chase when he was little before he was diagnosed and we were like oh he made more eye contact there in this video yeah um so yeah those are just things that we've noticed and i think that just like human nature just to like you know really look into it in depth of everything that we did and what we could have done and we don't know if these things are the factors or not the factors we are not medically well you've done some medical stuff in your past for your cardiovascular technology job but anyways the point is is we're not medical professionals and we're not we're not in any way saying that one way is right one way is not yeah this is just merely our view we're just sharing what we what we experienced experienced, and and what we saw uh would change in chase whether and these are just our how we thought that maybe we screwed up Yeah. yeah and how we could have done things better and which we did things differently with theo where we ate for some reason we felt healthier eating meat Meat. and uh maybe it's our blood type and having no restrictions yeah just having no restrictions and um with and then we obviously moved back to canada which we're living most of the time now we do bounce back and forth to los angeles for work but everything just felt more natural and like theo for us is clearly not on the spectrum no uh, he's so advanced he's, yeah, he's very engaging very with engaging everyone uh, one thing that chase does that gave us our first inclination that he had autism was he's a tiptoe walker mm. he likes to walk on his toes and at first it bothered us like crazy yeah uh, and we don't care now we're just happy he's happy and uh theo flat foot yeah which we're also very happy with and you love them no matter what route they're going as long as they're happy uh four months old talking repeating crazy eye contact like yeah almost weird i got back to the point where like he he like he looks at you like he knows what's going on yeah and we never got that from chase no chase and that's the thing like with first time parents we didn't know like that wasn't wasn't normal no at all like we didn't we were just watch him and play with him and be like oh he's so happy and he really was happy he's always been a happy kid he's like beyond the happiest no no he he's a he's a perfect sweetheart like i wouldn't change him yeah and that's the thing that i i would want to reiterate to parents is like and and also he's got his own like superpowers his memory is insane no his memory is insane but that's the thing is like you wouldn't want to change your kid no you just help them be the best version. You give them the tools. Yeah, of to who they the are. the best version that they can be. And then you see the personality shine through. And then I just truly believe with like kids with autism, or anyone with autism, they have an advantage in my opinion because their their mind works in a different way. But if you can give that mind confidence and guidance, yeah, you can. once they get the hang of things, mm-hmm. I think they Take might. Take you, case in point. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone your superpowers. <laughs> what are they, babe? Uh, your memory is ridiculous yeah. as well. I, I do have a very good memory. Uh, and the way you process things, like his mind, like... I have a very visual mind. Fires yeah. so fast. Well, that's why we think that I have autism, but it took me a while to learn how to work my mind. Yeah. And how to communicate the way that I want to be perceived and that mm-hmm. I feel... Yeah, it's... But, but when I was 12, I didn't have, like, that many friends. Like, I had one friend. That's why I, right off the bat I was like... Yeah, no. you didn't really have multiple friends until I met you. I just picked one person. <laughs> and I'm like, that's my go-to guy. And I'm like, that's... And I had one friend through every stage of my life. But what made it funny, because I said this to a friend the other day, like, all those go-to friends I had one at a time are all now my close friends. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have so many good friends, because, like, there, there's a Yeah, pretty, now you have a boy band. Pretty much. <laughs> But um, no, it's, 
I, I definitely do think they have an advantage. You look at some of the smartest and brightest people, and they have had some type of label of like autism, like Steve Jobs. Yeah. Apparently, uh, I think Elon Musk. Yeah, he definitely does. Um, who's the other one who's like a, a movie star? Sylvester Stallone. Yes, I a, love him. Yeah. He's, but he's apparently on the spectrum. No, I don't think it's him. I think it's one of his um, kids. Oh, okay. That's yeah. it. Um, but there but are, there's somebody. We have to get a uh, list. Kevin Spacey, I thought that I heard. Yes, that's Well, we'll it. get the list to verify all these names. But yeah. um, no, there's some very bright people. But I think, in my opinion, but that's just like with any human. Yeah. If they're nurtured, they're given confidence, they're yeah. pushed in the right direction. I, and I always say this because I'm cheesy, but I think anyone can do whatever they want. Yes, you've always um, said that. I, unfortunately, that's why the far end of the spectrum scares me because it breaks my heart because those, some of those kids can't. Mm -hmm. And their mind just can't process anything other than to, like things are overwhelming and they yeah. just have, they oh. have to stim. And they had like balance. It. Yeah, yeah. So that, that sucks for me. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. So people that have sensitivities to things that get overstimulated, mm -hmm. they could get overstimulated by like sounds, light, lights, taste, taste, te texture. Yeah. Like if something, I don't know, like, oh, um, when I was talking to Chase's first early childhood educator, Shell, who was amazing, I was, I was like, you think he's going to be fine? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, like, what's he going to be like when he's an adult? Like, I, cause I had no idea about autism. She's like, as people get older, they learn what works for them and they adapt to their environment. So like, you know how some adults need weighted blankets to go to sleep? Like that makes them feel comfortable and that calms them down. And, and that was like the first time that I understood like people with hypersensitivities to things and and things that tools that they use to like stabilize their well that, that you've learned to stabilize me we've been together for so long that you know that if there's something that needs yeah. to be planned you're like i gotta tell nick like a week ahead of oh time. god yeah or <laughs> or if it's gonna change like <laughs> i'm just i'm so weirdly visual but that's yeah. it's a good thing but it's also it's a it's a bit of both but half of why i've achieved any of my goals is because i visualized it yes and then I'm like, it's happening. And Chase is the same way. Yeah. If we're like, if Gaga is scheduled to go pick up Chase after school. And, and just so you guys are aware, Gaga is his oh, yeah. grandmother. <laughs> his grandma. And if Gaga is sick that day, like last minute call, she's like, I can't pick him up. And then if Nick or I go and pick him up, he has a meltdown. He's like, mm -hmm. where's Gaga? And it's because he visualized that and it just like ruins his day kind of. Well, I think like he's easy to get out of it. But I think we... that's why transitioning is hard for kids with autism. Yeah because they're visualizing their next steps and they're like i'm playing for I, i'm visualizing me playing and then if you're being like we're going to do this right now that's not what they had in mind yeah and i'm a victim of that like if you tell me right now that we're going to do something that i didn't expect to do i don't I'm not I, i'm just weird but i'm not I don't do it easy. I'm like, thinking about the skirt story. <laughs> oh, you mean the dress? Or the you, you really want to drop that off? <laughs> yeah. Because right. it's funny. Okay. okay. This is a bit personal. Uh, but so Maria, this was in LA, came down in this dress and uh, she was looking good. And I wanted, I put a styled outfit for Instagram and I was like, Instagram husband, can you come take a photo of me? We got in the car, we drove to a location, he took a photo and it was a great picture and we're like, awesome. And then we headed home and then we walk in the house, Nick went in the kitchen to grab water because it was super hot that yeah. day. And then I like vanished, went upstairs. I put on like, well, you remember the rest. <laughs> so we come home and I'm like, oh God, she looks good in that dress. And then she's like, I'll be right back. And I'm like, cool. And this whole time I was shooting her, I'm thinking, oh, I can't wait to get that dress off of her. <laughs> <laughs> it's a polite way to put it. And uh, I come down looking like a hobo. <laughs> no, you just came down in sweats. And <laughs> this is where we think it's like a bit of an autism thing. Autism. It is. I lost it. I was he like, lost his I was mind. Like, I'm like, why would you change out of that dress? And I'm like, what? What? I'm like, no. And, and I, I got physically you got, mad you got so not physically <laughs> no 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 not physically like, no not yeah. in, internally like yeah. I, that's what i'm, like, I'm not you got emotional about yeah. it he, I, I was got just really upset because i i was visualizing yeah he us, was visualizing uh, us you know being intimate being intimate <laughs> and, and, and then, but i but the visualization was that you were wearing the dress and yeah, I, I was pulling up the dress anyways too much information but that was too much um 
anyways. But yeah, he lost his mind and then <laughs> he had his like freak out stormed into the man but, but, cave. But let's note that I didn't lose my mind at you. It was at the situation. I was like, what? Like he literally stood there for like three minutes. Oh my God, why did you do that? And I'm just like. Well, maybe not three. Okay. But uh, then he like stormed off and I was like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then I like grabbed water and then I went into the man cave. I'm like, okay, do you want to explain what just but, happened? But and you then, were nice. You did put the dress back on. <laughs> Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, I do. <laughs> um, yeah, this was a couple years ago. But yeah, no, there's some there's some funny instances where we've noticed that I'll visualize something, and then the simplest things set you off, set me off. Yeah, and, and set Chase off too. And set Chase off. And, and I got two of them <laughs> that I got to freaking cope with but and least, navigate. Through. But at least I get mad at the situation. It's never at you. Yeah, yeah. It's just like I. But and then I. And he can't keep anything in his mouth. So it's just verbal diarrhea. Oh, he me? Just, yeah. yeah. No, I'm brutally honest. And same with Chase, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll say anything. Hence, I don't like that. Hence what I just said about our story. Yeah. It was a little too much information. Like, like Chase had a play date the other day. And he was done with his friend. And he's like, <laughs> poor Logan. He's like, bye, Logan. Logan, go home. And then Logan was like. Oh, yeah. And I was like, dude, you can't yeah. do that. But that's something we got to work on with him because he's obviously four. He's and me. And you. We're still working with this one. No, I'm going <laughs> to stay brutally honest. I love it. Brutally, being being brutally honest is one of my favorite things. Yeah, you're really good at that. One one thing that I've learned, though, is just pick when to do it. Yes. It's like if, if you can be brutally honest, but you can wait. Yeah. I've, I've learned to have a restraint on that. Yeah. But I'll say it. It just might not be at that time. I'll, but I'll say it like later that day or the next day. Yeah. Because yeah. there's appropriate time to be honest. Yeah. Um, quickly, let's just like talk about some of the therapies we did with Chase. Yep. Um, and then we should probably go because this one's got a massage at 1230. What time is it? I th it's, uh, I think, 5 to 12. Okay. Um, so some of the therapies that we were introduced to was ABA therapy. Yep. And we did speech therapy, physical therapy. And an early childhood educator we had. Yeah. And it, I think it depends what your child needs the most. Yes. Would be applicable to them. Yeah. Ch we did everything. Yeah. Because we were, we just didn't know. And luckily we had like an early diagnosis at 18 months, which isn't the case usually. I think doctors really like to um, do the evaluation and diagnosis like two and a half, three years old. Yeah, but I'm happy we were we were told so soon, so we could be well, super. We were cool. happy, but we also weren't. I'm happy we, now that we 100. percent But yeah. at the time, we were not happy. No, um, we were pissed and angry. But yeah, we put them in those different therapies, therapies and yeah. uh, some. And of ABA therapy is kind of controversial. Yeah, some yeah, because it's yeah, because it's repetitive yeah. therapy. But we like it because me personally, I'm a huge fan, and in the vein of thinking that repetition is the key to anything. Yeah. And also Chase thrives on routine. Yeah. He does well, a lot of kids on the spectrum do, but, yeah. but anything in life, any humans, even humans with no autism. Yeah. Like I love routine. Repetitively working out, eating clean, yeah. uh, showing love. Uh, th yeah. Compa like anything. In, the only way you get good at anything is repetition. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess people find that mean for a kid who, might not understand it yeah and i get that like if you can't understand why you're doing something yeah because your mind's not processing it i get how it could be viewed as cruel to repetitively try and get them to do something that they yeah. can't understand right but it's but it also depends on what type of kid you have no i, I know but yeah. you think about it in the vein that it's for the best for them and even though sometimes it could seem mean Sometimes you got to do something that could seem mean to get them to where they need to be. Like yeah, like tough and, love. Yeah, that's the yeah. controversial thing of parenting now. Like that, me and you've gone back with. Like yeah. I, I'm a huge believer in tough discipline. love and discipline. Well, that's as someone who we think is autistic. I think the only thing that got me to handle myself was the discipline of martial arts. Yes. And if I didn't have that, who knows where I'd be right now? It got me to like learn how to like listen and be disciplined with myself and mm -hmm. so i don't think if you give anyone a backbone or discipline yeah and like a structure to follow yeah i i think this like new wave of parenting and again this could be controversial like but the gentle parenting i don't personally 
love it. I think being sweet to your child and showing love is obviously paramount and it's important. But yeah. why, if they need to be disciplined in the right way, not physically. Yeah. Then just stern, really. Well, just to being important, like, and that's part of being a mom and a dad. Like, it might be old school and traditional, but I think you know, a mom is there to be loving, and a mom and a, and a dad is there to, if they step out of line, that you be a dad. You show them life's not all easy peasy, easy, peasy, peasy rainbows. Because if, yeah. like, back when I was in my karate school, that whole story of like parents would come to me and be like, "Oh, why aren't you uh, hitting my kid?" And that's the weirdest <laughs> thing to say, but. I wouldn't hit them hard, but I would hit a kid in the in the stomach, have them tighten up. If and they're I told, ready I told for you, it. yeah, if they're ready yeah. for it. So that way, when you go out in the world, if someone hits you, you're not like, oh, what, what happened? Stunned. And, yeah, yeah. And that that happened to me. Mm-hmm. I got my butt kicked in karate, and I remember my first fight in high school. Some kid came up and hit me in the face like that, <laughs> and I would, I was like, what was that? <laughs> I laughed because I'm used to getting smoked. And I'm like, I'm not fighting you. I actually felt bad. Yeah. I, I felt comfortable in the situation. I stayed calm. I'm like, not fighting you. You weren't tried, threatened. No, I tried yeah. to de-escape the situation. And then he- You're threw, like, dude, you don't uh, want me to touch you. Went to walk away, threw me into a locker. I turned around, wound up a chamber, boom, two reverse punches, knocked the kid out. Yeah. Did you get expelled? I got suspended. Oh, yeah. Expelled means you're like banned from the school. Yeah, I got yeah. suspended. And then- when He got suspended longer. And then when he came back, he brought a machete like this to try and- stab me i don't remember the story yeah my thadril is he was in a class with thadril and he opened the bag like an idiot well he's an idiot for bringing it anyway but he showed it to one of my best like my best friend and he's like i'm here to do like this is this is my revenge on nick oh my god and then they thadril's like no went to the teacher and was like this kid has a knife and they expelled, oh, wow. they expelled him thank you thadril <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, that's wild but th- the point was of the whole story is that i felt comfortable because i had gone through what it's like to yeah you you were in like a safe place and they were training you to like defend yourself and obviously you did the right thing you were trying to like well as a martial artist you're trained to if you can avoid the fight you avoid the fight that's number one yeah Yeah. there's no point in fighting um but if you need to use it you use it you can Um, defend yourself exactly but that yeah it discipline and i i got the shit kicked out of me Mm -hmm. i got to as the younger belt, I had to carry the black belt's bags. Like, literally. I remember carrying, like, four massive hockey bags into a cryo tournament Well, the adults just walked We're in. sipping on their coffee. Well, yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like 12 years old. Yeah. And you think back, you're like, well, that's mean. And my mom got mad at it. And yeah. obviously, I didn't like it. Yeah. But it gave me a backbone mm-hmm. and it changed me. So that, yeah, going into, like, the tough love and the parenting, that's where it comes in. With yeah. me and we disagreed on it at times we've actually for the got, longest time we've gotten massive fights about it we got in big fights about yeah. it because you were like you're being too hard too on hard him. on him and uh i'm like no the people that i know that got raised with people not being hard on them yeah we've had this conversation because that's really the people always ask me this like do you guys ever fight that's like the only time we've really had massive fights is about chase and with disciplining him mm-hmm um i feel like now we're both on board like <laughs> on i side. finally agreed with nick <laughs> well th- because this is what happened let me tell you a story <laughs> she was like we got in the argument i'm like you know what? fine we'll do your way and we did her way which was zero discipline just meet things with love gentle and, parenting gentle parenting meet things yeah. with love and understanding only and explaining the situation and, and yeah he was turning into a brat he became a very <laughs> very mis- quickly misbehaved non-listening brat and uh, she she came up to me and she she. It made you, me mad. That you I... you ended up disciplining with tough love, and you came to me and you're like, Cause and I was, it worked. I was gone, and you're like, it worked. Yeah. Now I remember the first time that we got in the argument, and this is a funny story. And then uh, we'll we'll wrap this up soon. Yeah. But he was asking for a popsicle, and I was just like, say please. You remember the story? Oh yeah, this it's one. Like just say please, and he's like, like no popsicle then. And he's, he's like, popsicle. And I'm like, if you say please, you're getting a popsicle. Didn't say please. And I was like, if you say I want a popsicle right one more time without saying please, you're going on timeout. Oh, yeah. That's... And he lost it. He's like, popsicle. And I'm like, that's it, timeout. And I picked him up gently and I walked him up to his room and I put him at the time he was in a crib for a timeout. That's where he spent his time, his timeouts. And he lost it, screaming, that's crying. Really sad. Um, 
and she got mad at me. You, she was thinking that that's not right. That's too much. And in my opinion, I'm like, why? I'm like, it's a timeout. He needs to learn that he can't do that. He's, you know, if we're trying to teach him something. Again, there was no yelling at him. There's nothing. It was just go into your room for a timeout. Uh, the next day, he wakes up. He comes down. And he brings me something. He goes, and this is the first time he's ever said it. He goes, can I have this, please? Yeah. Instantly, just from one moment of tough love, next day he said, please. And I look at her with that, you know, I told you so look at my face, but she wanted to smack me. But I was yeah. like, I'm like, see, I know you didn't like it. I know we don't want to hear him cry and scream. I don't either. Yeah. But said, please. And ever since then, um, with a little bit of tough love in the right way, it actually helps him excel. It could be different for different kids. Yeah. I don't know. This yeah. is our kid and this is our personal experience. But and now he has the best manners. <laughs> oh, he does. <laughs> Even when he's crying and we're like, oh, do you, we got Do you want to go home now? No, thank you. Yeah, like, anything. It's... Do you want a haircut? No, thank you. No, yeah. th- it's actually gotten so much of good manners that it bugs us where we're like not even saying anything. He's like, no, thank you. I'm like, we haven't even asked you anything. Just chill. Yeah. <laughs> You're fine. Um, oh, he's such a funny little yeah. guy. So yeah, this is, we wanted to come out and share this part of our lives with you guys. Um, it's been super hard for us. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's taken us a long time to get where we are. Yeah. And that's really why, like this was the main reason why we wanted to create this is just to give like a little, space for other parents or people or adults kids to come to and kind of connect with us on this and maybe it can help you and give you a little hope or light or some resources anything and i mean all we want to do is help others like i just like we both just want people to be happy in this life so there's you know anything that we can do to help someone struggling well this won't be your last time talking about this no we're gonna go over other aspects because it's you there's know, so many topics. There's so much, so many things to fit into this time, but we just wanted to, this Start. to be your introduction to you guys to, of the situation. So you guys kind of understand, you know, kind of who we are as people, our reasonings yeah. for things. Like part of the main reason why we went back to Canada was because we wanted proper schooling for Chase and we felt that there was better early educators and therapists in Canada. And, yeah. And, uh, and our uh, support systems here for Chase yeah, and but, us. But also like the air. We're like the air is cleaner in Canada. The air like, is cleaner we here. just went so crazy <laughs> over what we went mental of thinking, oh, yeah. what, what could be better if for Theo or this or that. So And in the area we were living in, there was fires like nonstop. Nonstop. Yeah. And then that's like a whole different kind of air pollution. So yeah. I mean we could talk about this yeah. forever. So we'll, well end we'll it ra- here. We'll wrap this up. <laughs> bottom line, welcome to the Bateman's podcast. Yes. Uh, we're happy to have you guys here. We're happy to be here. We've yeah. tried so many times to, to film this, to film this, but we've been battling battle- children. Children, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, until next time. Yeah. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Rocket, a podcast. See you next